And now the stage is set where it will not be long before the BRICS alternative can threaten the petrodollar monetary system with collapse. They cannot allow it to collapse. That's why the war will take place. In order to preserve the mountain of gold. But they do not want to attack Russia without some causes bellum. They need to create a justification for war. So they've been engaging in provocation after provocation. And the greatest provocation of all that you can give to Russia is to get Ukraine under a pro-Western government and get Ukraine to join NATO and Ukraine is next door to Russia. So they knew that if they could get regime change in Ukraine, it will lead to war. And they got regime change in Ukraine last December. No, sorry, one year ago. One year ago. What they did not calculate for was that Russia would respond the way she did. Russia responded by recovering Crimea. And when you study my lectures on Islamic eschatology, you'll understand that Crimea is of pivotal importance for the conquest of Constantinople. And that's what Russia now has, Crimea. The longer they wait to attack Russia, the stronger will Russia now become. Projecting power in the whole of the Black Sea area. And so my conclusion is that they have already declared war on Russia. That's what the economic sanctions are. That the president of France realized that when that nuclear war takes place, France is finished. And so the president of France was the first voice to be raised just a few days ago to say, no, I think we should remove the sanctions on Russia because he realized that this is going to lead to nuclear war. But the Zionists had other plans. And that's why the two men came with hoods over their, show, their head and they killed the 12 people. And then they went to some um, kosher restaurant and they left, you know, to say, well, we are ISIS or we are Muslims and so on. It happened so many times already in the past to put the blame on Muslims. And now France is in uproar. So the French president has to forget what he said about sanctions against Russia. Hmm? When the nuclear war takes place, we know that it's going to devastate North America and Europe, Europe East and Europe West. But Russia is not just a European country. Russia is also an Asian country. <laughs> so Russia will survive the nuclear war. I gave a lecture in Bangkok. Uh, maybe two weeks ago, you'll find it on my website. Please listen to it. An Islamic view of the world after the Malhama, what will the world be like? Hmm? So please go to my YouTube channel and listen to that lecture. An Islamic view of the world post Malhama. And also make sure you start getting dinar and dirham. This is Sunnah. This is Halal. This is money in the Quran. Dinar and dirham. 
the price of gold has gone down now because the price of oil is being deliberately taken down in order to sabotage Russia. So this is a time for you to buy gold and buy silver, dinar and dirham. And they're being minted now in Malaysia. So there's no excuse, you can get it easily. What happens after the Malhama? After that, said the Prophet Islam, and the next event would be the conquest of Constantinople. Incidentally, the conquest of Constantinople indicates that Russia will survive the Malhama. Because there is no military significance of the conquest of Constantinople other than that the Bosphorus and the Straits of is it Darnadels or that? I, I, I pronounced it wrongly last time. The Bosphorus and the Straits of Darnadels uh, would now be open. NATO will no longer be controlling it. So the Russian Navy can now pass from the Black Sea into the Mediterranean Sea straight to Israel. Hmm? After the conquest of Constantinople, the next event would be the Khuruj of Dajjal. When Dajjal will now appear in human form, and he will be a Jew, he'd be a young man, he'd be powerfully built, he'd have the curls of the Orthodox Jews. Israel would then be ruling the world, the ruling state in the world. The state of Israel has to expand its territory from the river Nile to the river Euphrates, therefore war on Egypt. But all of these things we have already spoken of in previous lectures. And then the Jal will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am the Messiah, the Messiah. And uh, those, who, those who have tafsir, for what they should have ta'wil, they will say, no, he cannot be Dajjal. Why? Oh, he has two eyes. And the Prophet said, Dajjal has one eye. <laughs> See? Because they're given tafsir when they should be given ta'wil. When the Prophet said, Dajjal sees with his left eye, he's blind in the right eye. The ta'wil is that Dajjal has external vision and he is internally blind. And all those who follow him would be internally blind. So he say, I am the Messiah. My opinion, and I can be wrong, and the rule is that when Imran gives an opinion, you must never accept his opinion until you are convinced that he is correct. That's the rule. My opinion is that Allah will not allow Imam al-Mahdi to emerge until Dajjal has completed his mission. And Nabi Isa Islam cannot return until Imam al-Mahdi has emerged. Mm -hmm. How much time do we have left before the Malhama? How much time do we have left before the Fatul Constantinia? How much time do we have left before the Khuruj of Dajjal? Mm -hmm. The only one who can answer such a question is the one who studies Ilm Akhiru Zaman. The fellow with Tafsir cannot do it. The, the Mufti cannot do it with his Fiqh. No. The historian cannot do it. The political scientist cannot do it. The economist cannot do it. The only one who can answer such questions are those who devote themselves to Ilm Akhiru Zaman. That is how important this subject is. I, 
was thinking that perhaps we still have another five to ten years before the nuclear war takes place. When I went to Iran to a conference in uh, September, and uh, I normally do not reveal my dreams. No, I don't do that. But on this occasion, I broke the rules and I said, no, I have to reveal this dream. I had the dream twice on the same night during the conference. I saw nuclear war. And I saw the nuclear missiles being shot into the sky. And I saw that Pakistan was a part of the nuclear war. Obviously, that has to take place. Once nuclear war takes place, Pakistan has to be attacked. Because they cannot allow Pakistan to remain as a nuclear power. Not at all. When I had that dream and I woke up, I came to the conclusion that because of a previous dream that I had two years before 9-11 and two years later 9-11 took place, I said to myself, well, if history is to repeat itself, the implication is that Allah has sent this dream to me, giving us the same two years time. If the Malhama is to take place in another two years, what do we do? And the, number one, get out of the cities. Head for your kampung. <laughs> Head for the kampung. Number two, stay away from big communities, go to small ones, small villages. Number three, stock up on food. Number four, stock up on water. Number food, number food, number three is food, number four, water. Number five, life and death is in Allah's hands. And when Allah chooses death, the servant of Allah accepts death. Only Allah will know who will live and who will die. But if you live after the malhamah, you got to be prepared. After the malhamah, the big cities are going to be the worst place in the world to live. Why? A city of 20 million people cannot feed itself. It gets its food from outside. It gets its water supply from outside. Like Karachi. And when the Malhama takes place, the supply lines will be disrupted. When no food is coming and no water is coming, you're going to have riots. It will be dog eat dog. People will be breaking down the doors of your home and coming into your home to steal your food and your water. No way, no way can you hide it. So if you live in the cities, it's going to be anarchy. It's going to be hell in the cities and on that day when hell breaks, breaks out in the towns and cities on that day when all hell breaks out in the towns and cities then you will remember suratul suratul isra where Allah says wa immin qaryatin illa Nahnu muhlikuha qabla yawmil qiyama aw mu'azzibuha azaban shadida kana dhalika fil kitab mastura and not a single town and city will escape we will destroy them all and those which are not destroyed will be punished with terrible, terrible punishment and this is something inscribed in the book. So when the Malhama takes place, wait to see what's going to happen in the big cities and towns. So safety lies in getting out, withdrawing, going to the remote countryside, 
and stocking up on food and on water. And then comes the conquest of Constantinople. And I believe that is why they created ISIS. I don't think they created ISIS primarily to remove Assad. <laughs> no. I think they created ISIS more to sabotage the Muslim army which will move to conquer Constantinople because ISIS will stand in the way from Arabs joining that army, joining with the Turkish Muslims in the effort to break the back of NATO and liberate Constantinople from NATO control. That's why they created ISIS. But if Allah has ordained that it will happen, it will happen. Constantinople will be conquered on the basis of an alliance of Islam, Muslims and Rome. And uh, we do not have the time tonight to enter into a discussion on that subject of the alliance with Rome. After the conquest of Constantinople, we have the Khuruj of Dajjal. It's time for you to study the subject of Dajjal. This book of mine, Jerusalem in the Quran, has a chapter in it on Dajjal, and this book is translated into Bahasa. Please now, after tonight's lecture of an introduction to Ilmu Akhiru Zaman, take some time to read the books I've written. Listen to the lectures on YouTube. You can down, download them free of charge. And begin to study the subject and take the Quran and start to use the Quran to study and understand the world in which you're living today. And I pray that from Adam Impiang may come out scholars who tomorrow will be able to teach the subject of Ilmu Akhiru Zaman. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim wa tub alina ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim. Bi rahmatika ya arhamur rahmin. Ameen.